This is KGW News at Sunrise. Next on Sunrise, a surfer bitten in the leg by a shark while paddling in seaside over the weekend. How the man survived this rare attack thanks to quick action from those in the water with him. Hospitals around Britain are receiving doses of the COVID vaccine before people get their shots tomorrow. Coming up this morning, we look at how many doses will be ready in the first week and who will be the first in line. And we've all been dealing with the impact of the pandemic now for about nine months. So here's the question for you this morning. Would you say that your eating habits have gotten healthier since March or have they gotten worse? I promise you there will be no judging here this morning. <laughs> Uh, we're simply sharing the results of a recent study gang on that very topic coming up here in about 15 minutes. Now, I say good morning to Nina. I say good morning to Brenda and Rod. Again, we're not talking about this topic now. So going to you has nothing to do <laughs> with that. Drew, yes. that video was Thanksgiving dinner. That's not fair. Come on. <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. Right. Here we go. We have rain offshore. That comes in tomorrow. But I want you to notice all the clouds just kind of brushing into our area. So it, overall, today is going to be either partly sunny or just mostly cloudy. We do have some fog pockets out there right now. We're dry. PDX is 43. All of you are above freezing here in the Willamette Valley. We'll be 47 at noon again, maybe some sun, and then 48 degrees at 5 p.m. Your seven day coming up shortly. Thank you, Rod. Topping your news this morning, scary moments on the Oregon coast after a shark bit a surfer in Seaside Cove. That man has an injured leg, but he's gonna survive. We've both lived here long enough, Brendan, to know shark attacks along the coast are super rare. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the first one, though, that has been reported anywhere along the coast this year. I may have to have you do the story because there's something in my throat. No, but absolutely. I'll try it one more time. Are you sure? No, you do it. <laughs> okay, we want to show you the photo from the attack in Seaside yesterday. The shark bit the guy's surfboard. First responders say other surfers pulled him out of the water. And an off-duty lifeguard who was there managed to apply a tourniquet to slow the bleeding. We talked to Oregon Parks and Rec afterwards. They said that this really is a reminder that all of us need to be alert and cautious in and around the water. Sharks um, are pretty well tuned to what their prey food is. And sometimes they'll make a mistake. And uh, for instance, a surfboard can mimic the outline speed of a seal or a sea lion. Uh, and there can be uh, sort of a curious bumping uh, that goes on between sharks and people who are out on the water. All right, as Brenda just mentioned, shark attacks on the Oregon coast, absolutely rare, but sightings are more common. In fact, the most recent reported sighting in Seaside before this weekend was back in July. All right, let's get to some more headlines from this weekend in case you missed them. Take a look at this video, a rock slide trapped nearly a dozen people in a tunnel on a beach in Oceanside Saturday. That's next to Tillamook. This is crazy. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Emergency crews rescued some of them in under 30 minutes, while others were able to climb out from the other side of that tunnel. All right, also on the coast, a Waldport City Councilor was killed during a burglary in his own home Sunday morning. Deputies say they got a 911 call from Mark Campbell's wife, she told them someone was inside their home and her husband was fighting with the intruder. Campbell had died from injuries from the fight by the time deputies arrived. No one still has been arrested. In Oregon City, police arrested a man for starting the fire that ripped through the old Blue Heron paper mill. Witnesses say Enrique Mejia was seen throwing furniture from a window of that vacant mill before the flames started. Police managed to find and arrest him as they put out the fire. That mill has been closed since 2011. And those are some of your headlines. Portland was in the national spotlight, at least for a few hours this weekend. MSNBC came to town to broadcast the Velshi show from here. As Tim Gordon tells us, Ali Velshi focused on how the city and state are doing with the pandemic and its other challenges. Ali Velshi has taken his show on the road with Velshi Across America. And today I'm in Portland, Oregon, a city like many across the country that is currently struggling medically and economically under the weight of the pandemic. The show host laid out the statistics that show Oregon is struggling. COVID numbers are up. Economic numbers are down. Now I want to hear your stories firsthand masked face to masked face. He interviewed people like Dr. Smith Achataga from Legacy Emanuel Medical Center. What does the next six months look like to you? 
I want to be really honest here. I don't want to sugarcoat it. I think we're in for a long haul, and I think it's going to be difficult. But I know we can do this. America has faced difficult things before. We have come together and helped each other out, and that's what we need to do now. Velshi got Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici to the East Bank Esplanade before dawn to accommodate the East Coast time schedule. Bonamici talked about the hard times here. There are many things that came together to create this stress. Of course, the the COVID-19 pandemic and very concerned about the numbers that you're talking about. Stress of the pandemic, but Bonamici said also from the unrest Portland has seen during months of protests and from devastating wildfires that hit the Pacific Northwest at the very end of summer. The House has passed bills to help address these problems. We need the Senate to act as well. Congressman Earl Blumenauer also spoke about legislation he's promoting to get cash grants to hard-hit independent restaurants. If you're in Portland, you understand that our neighborhood independent restaurants are really the lifeblood. They employ uh, more women and minorities. Uh, it's where people gather. And Velshi profiled a few of those places here, survivors so far, including Deadstock Coffee. Owner Ian Williams shared what's helped him keep going. Being as connected to the community and as real with the community as you can is really what's going to help you stay afloat. Do what you can to let the community know that you still need them and that you still love them, that you still care. But also let them know, like, without you, I, I, we can't make it. People from Portland having their say on the national stage. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Well, across the Atlantic Ocean, Britain is set to become the first country to roll out the Pfizer vaccine. That's happening tomorrow. The doses will be given to three different groups, frontline health care workers, nursing home staff and residents, and people over 80. They will make the shot available at hospitals before distributing more shots to clinics. Hospital pharmacists, meanwhile, they are happy, to say the least, to finally have a vaccine. Uh, it's, it's just incredible, actually. Obviously, I can't hold them in my hands because they are minus 70 degrees. But to know that they are here and we are amongst the first in the country to actually receive the vaccine and therefore the first in the world is just amazing. I'm so proud. Around 800,000 doses should be available there within the first week. The British Health Ministry says they will be quality checked before they're given out. Oregon, meanwhile, is still on track to get shipments of both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines here in a couple of weeks. The state is set to receive a total of 147,000 first doses on December 22nd. Both of those vaccines require two shots. And the state will also get roughly 120,000 second doses by December the 29th. All of the initial shipments will go to healthcare workers. Next in line after that will be first responders, people in long-term care facilities, and their caregivers. Then it's essential workers, and then everyone else. Well, Oregon is planning to launch a contact tracing app next month. Washington launched theirs last week. Oregon's app is part of a pilot program at Oregon State University. It started early last month and will end sometime this month. State officials will gather data for the official launch coming up in January. The app is going to be totally voluntary. You get to choose whether to opt in. Here's how it works. The app records any time a user gets physically close to another app user. When somebody uploads a positive COVID test, it'll send an alert to those they've been around. Everybody stays anonymous and officials are also stressing that app will not track your location. All right, this is not my favorite reminder of the morning, but it should help if you're just waking up. It is Monday. <laughs> the weekend is over. Uh, a lot of you having Christmas fun over the holiday weekend here. Uh, this is a beautiful tree. How about that? That came into us. Oh, it's already gone. First you come and then you go. All right, we're going on to the second picture here. Vicki says her grandson helped out getting their Christmas tree this weekend. Vicki, thanks for sending in that picture. And then we have Caesar. Man, he's got the stockings up, the trees lit up. Everything's ready to go here on December the 7th. Thank you for sending in those pictures, guys, and we would like to see more of your pictures. So please send us them. Easy way to do it is text us. 503-226-5088 is the text number to send in those Christmas, Christmas tree, Christmas stocking pictures. Uh, I'm wondering, Rod Hill. Yes. Do you have the stockings up already at the Hill House? No, but we started the process yesterday. We went to a Christmas tree lot. All these beautiful trees, seemingly thousands of them. Yes. To my wife, Grayson. 
honey, are you sure you're not finding the exact one that you want? Keep so looking. The, so the search continues. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We have clouds offshore. This is a rainmaker that will be with us tomorrow. It is raining up in the parts of western Washington this morning. And we will get kind of brushed, if you will, with some of this cloudiness today. But again, no rain chance for our area. We are starting off with some fog in a few spots, but nothing so far has become widespread. And we are once again watching east winds. Right now, these are sustained winds. Most of us are calm. Trap tail sustained at 16. Already, you folks have been gusting up to about 25 miles per hour. Uh, Eastern Clark uh, and Multnomah counties could see winds back up to about 35 today. Those winds will be in proximity to the gorge itself. Here are the early morning numbers, uh, and we are well above freezing. In fact, 42 in Salem, low 40s in Portland, Kelso, the Dalles. Good morning. You are above freezing. There is a widespread air stagnation advisory for central and eastern Oregon, uh, and some of you, including the Dalles, could be locked underneath a cloud shield today. Real quick look at future cast shows kind of a mix of some sun but cloudiness passing today. Here comes the rain first thing in the morning to the coast and then rain picking up throughout the morning hours into the noon hour here in Portland. 50 today, maybe a quarter of an inch total developing tomorrow into tomorrow night. 50 degrees, showers Wednesday, Thursday. We'll keep an eye on this weekend. It could be really, really wet this weekend. I'm talking pouring rain. Whoa. We're watching that. All right. Keep <laughs> watching it, Rod. Thank you so much. Hey, next, Rudy Giuliani now has the coronavirus. We're going to look at how the news will affect the president's continued election fight that Giuliani has spearheaded. The COVID weight gain. Yeah, we call it the quarantine 15. <laughs> Coming up this morning on Sunrise, we connect the dots on how the pandemic has turned our habits upside down, including the way we eat. Also this morning, we want to remind you the final two weeks of the great toy drive are here. So this year, the safest way you can give is online. Very easy to do as well. When you make an do online donation, we will do the shopping for you. A lot of those online donations support local toy stores right in your neighborhood. They also, of course, support more than 100 local nonprofits. We know a lot of our families that watch the show, they could also use toys this year. So if you'd like to receive some toys, please go to that website you see right there, kgw.com slash toy, and there's a, a link you can click on. It's the Is Your Family Looking for Assistance link. Through that, you can contact local nonprofits, that will be distributing toys near you. Of course, we also want to thank our big partners at Regents, IQ Credit Union, and local Toyota dealerships for everything they're doing this year to make our toy drive a success. We're back with more Sunrise here in three minutes.